Good morning, folks. Our star may be devoid of sunspots, but she's got tricks up her sleeve anyway. We've got lots of other news to cover, but we're starting at spaceweathernews.com to find that southern coronal hole just about 24 hours from reaching center heliographic longitudes. If Earth hasn't magnetically connected yet, that should be happening today. Ahead of any faster streams it is emitting, the solar wind has entered a bit of variable conditions overnight, but only to modest range as in purple, we're not even spiking up to 500 kilometers per second yet. This is technically still within expected ambient stream conditions, and so the movement on the KP index is minor, to match the minor stream. Top weather alert today comes to the eastern United States. It has been a minute since we've had some storms to discuss for this side of the country, but they are back now. Eyes open tonight. I want to come back to the corona holes for just a moment. The reason their solar wind emission is so strong is because that's where the sun's magnetic fields don't loop back down like in sunspots, but stream out past Pluto and directly connect with the planets as they do so driving both particle and magnetic field interactions that fall outside of the normal space weather range because when they couple to Earth's field, the plasma sneaks right through to the atmosphere. Folks, we've got eight straight days of enhanced coronal hole magnetic fields coming, including from one just now cresting at the limb on the left. These are our primary timing measure for when the big earthquakes come back, and while we expect a magnitude 7 event every 20 days on the planet, by long-term average it's now been 94 days. 94 days without one. Magnitude 6 events have been below average as well, eyes open and on the local signals to determine which regions are most likely to take the hit. You know where to go for that by now, don't you? Let's go up next to China. An amazing fireball lit up the sky this week. Locals say it was much brighter than noontime sun for a split second. Next, let's go out to the moon. Or is that Mars? Let's just go ahead and say it's both. An interesting and only quasi-suspicious new study claims that the soil on both the Moon and Mars is going to support agriculture, things that we can grow. Now, while every ounce of me would love that to be true, these are some of the folks trying to get funding to do major projects in that arena. Not like they're going to say it's impossible. It's sort of like when the scientists were saying, there is gold on Mars, give me a grant to study it. Up next, a very poor climate article for a couple reasons. First, its only point of merit is suggesting that forests are good. Big thumbs up from us there. The rest is not only overkill based on the full fact story of climate change, but it makes honorable sounding suggestions that have little basis in fact and reality. For example, they want to tell us to stop eating meat, that meat is bad. Well, whales? One whale is worth a thousand trees in a forest. Through a number of mechanisms, including sequestration of its food to the sea floor, whales and other massive creatures in the sea fit that category, much more than trees. So maybe we need more meat, provided it's the right kind. Then again, that's only true if carbon dioxide is the end-all be-all of climate, which it is not. That full story is linked below if you haven't seen it somehow. It's called Climate Forcing. Folks, our last two articles are cosmology, and hopefully you've done the homework already here. This was like the lost light of Hubble story on an individual galaxy by galaxy scale. Look at how much material they're able to resolve around these galaxies, and no, it's not the dark matter, it's the sparse, cold gas, dust, and plasma, hard to see luminous matter, exactly where the dark matter was expected to be. In the last of these shots, unfortunately, the bottom corner darkest frame with the most matter detected is cropped so that you cannot see the full halo circle. I'm hoping you can see the outer curves of it in the corners, and folks, that is even bigger than the expected dark matter halo. Goodbye issue. But this next one will puzzle me all week if not longer. We're at active galactic nuclei, the big ones, the ones they call supermassive black holes. Now, stay the plasma and electric theories on those objects for just a moment because these things just got more interesting. One of the earlier ones they can see is M77, where a churning monster lies at the center of the galaxy with counter-rotating components. They say it could explain how they formed so quickly, which could erase a timeline problem for the Big Bang, but it would present another one for galactic dynamics, because this would indicate that a powerful current runs through the nucleus and jets, the axis of the galaxy, like Stanford showed us in their National Accelerator Lab in which Berkeley confirmed with Lawrence Livermore. The magnetic fields and secondary currents concentrically expanding from the axial force spin in alternating ways. So, would we rather have this as evidence against the Big Bang or proof of electric circuit and large-scale magnetic fields at grand cosmic scales. Yeah, 
all week, if not longer. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.